Hi, I'm Lina Chan. With more than half the world's population living in urban areas, this is the age of cities. As cities become more built up, it is inevitable that green spaces become fragmented. Singapore is no different. Despite being densely populated, Singapore is surprisingly still home to rich biodiversity. To ensure that future generations can enjoy our natural heritage, it is essential for us to protect our rich biodiversity and conserve the existing gene pool now. To optimise these green spaces for our biodiversity, it is of utmost importance to reduce the impact urban development has on wildlife by connecting these green spaces. How do we connect these green spaces together? Through ecological corridors. Ecological corridors are areas enhanced with greenery so that biodiversity can move around more easily. They strengthen ecological connectivity for animals to search for food, partners, new homes, and maintain heterogeneity of gene pools. The greenery along our ecological corridors also helps to mitigate the effects of urbanization. By greening our roads, we cool our streets. They also enhance the aesthetics of our urban areas, making them more livable. If you drive along the roads of Singapore, look out for the multi-tiered roadside plantings that are now characteristic of our streetscape. In actual fact, there are two typologies for these multi-tiered plantings. One which focuses on native species and the other that focuses on flowering species. Our long-term goal is to make every road a nature way. But this cannot happen overnight. Currently, we are curating well 37 nature ways in Singapore, totaling 130 kilometres. That's a long way. Nature ways form ecosystems that provide food and shelter for the animals that use them. Nature ways consist of four layers, emergent canopy understory and shrub layers. Closest to the ground, is a shrub layer. This consists of flowering shrubs that attract butterflies, nectar-loving birds and small reptiles. They also add vibrance along our roads, making them a visual feast for drivers, joggers and pedestrians. Above the shrub layer is the understory. These are usually smaller trees that attract birds which feed on their fruit. The nectar from the flowers are also food for birds and butterflies. The canopies of the planted trees block sunlight, wind and rain for the layers below them and protect animals from predators such as eagles and also reduce soil erosion. The tallest and final layer is the emergent layer. These trees provide nesting sites for larger sized birds like eagles and other raptors. Shy birds, small mammals and primates use the overarching canopies of the emergent trees to cross from one naturally vegetated patch to another, extending the spaces that they can use. Here we are at Jurong Spring Nature Way. It connects all green spaces between Western Catchment and Jurong Lake Gardens. There are lots of birds and butterfly species that use this nature way. There are 30 over species of trees and shrubs that support this amazing wildlife that you find in a busy street in Singapore. At the emergent layer, the crewing Diprocarpus elitus is a primary rainforest species that can grow up to 40 meters tall. It has large scented flowers and winged fruits that are dispersed by wind. One of the native understory plants that are commonly found in the Jurong Spring Nature Way is a small leaf all fruit, also known as the Elocarpus mastercii. 
It's named because of its all rich fruits. Birds like the yellow vented bobo and the pink neck green pigeon feed on them. One of the common trees found in this nature way is the Syzygium zenanticum, also known as the Kalat Nanasi. How do you recognize it? Look out for its flaky bark and red coloration. When it's flowering, you find white flowers that looks like powder puffs. Birds, butterflies and other insects pollinators love to feed on its nectar. Jurong Spring Nature Way is 5.3 kilometers long, but it isn't the longest nature way in Singapore. Located nearby is Singapore's longest nature way, Tengah Nature Way. Tengah Nature Way is 13 kilometers in length and connects the Central Catchment Nature Reserve with the Western Catchment, passing through green spaces such as Bukit Batok Town Park. It was opened in 2014 with the help of community groups who set up gardens with bird and butterfly attracting plants in the vicinity of Tengah Nature Way. A canopy tree that you can find here is a Chenga Pasir, Hopia odorata. It has straight trunk and short buttresses lovely small fragrant flowers and wing fruits. Another major ecological corridor in Singapore is the Rail Corridor. You might remember it as the old KTM railway track that used to run from Tanjung Paga Railway Station to Johor in Malaysia, ferrying goods and people. The 24 kilometer long railway has been transformed into a continuous green passage from north to south it provides great recreational spaces with rich heritage, as well as an expressway for animals and seeds to disperse right across the island. Being an important ecological corridor, the rail corridor is left to rewild itself naturally. As such, the grass along rail corridor is not cut as frequently as our urban parks, allowing the wildflowers to grow. Various native tree species have also been planted to support our native biodiversity and to extend the habitats of our natural spaces. Along the rail corridor, right next to Bukit Timah Nature Reserve, you can find tree species that thrive in the forest, like Strabulus elongatus and Macaranga graffitiana. Macaranga survives in very hardy, sunny conditions, and that is why when a tree fall forms a tree gap, and they are the first to establish itself in these harsh conditions. And that is why they are called pioneer species. Planting species found in Bukit Timah Nature Reserve here enlarges the suitable areas for wildlife that live within the reserve. You can spot several species of ficus along the rail corridor, like ficus variegata and ficus fistulosa. Given the rich heritage of the railway, Heritage fruit trees are also being planted along the rail corridor, not only for people to connect to our past, but also as food source for our wildlife. You can find along the rail corridor a fruit tree called the Assam Kandis, Garcinia parvifolia. Wood from the Assam Kandis is also used to construct houses. The Sandoricum kojapi is a large evergreen native tree that you can also find along the rail corridor. It grows up to 50 meters tall in primary and secondary forests. Through the planting of a mixture of forest species and fruit producing species, the rail corridor is able to facilitate the movement and dispersal of our wildlife. This journey has demonstrated how ecological corridors are important components of our city in nature. Not only do they bring nature closer to people, they help us to be healthier and make Singapore more livable while conserving our natural heritage for future generations to come. I hope you've enjoyed the short tour of two of our ecological corridors. When you have the time, do visit the rail corridor and learn more about our nature ways. Don't forget to look out the educational boards that will tell you more. Remember, take nothing but photographs. Leave nothing but footprints. Stay in the designated trails for safety. 
and observe wildlife at a distance. Goodbye.